here's the thing. Podcasts start and then they don't last. People run out of ideas or out of courage or out of steam, or maybe, just maybe, they get immersed in the other thing that is their thing. And that's what happened. Welcome to Finding Words in Hard Times, the podcast. We've got stories and tools to help you be more comfortable as you help others in hard times. I'm John Swanson. I'm a hospital chaplain, a writer, and a teacher. And this is episode 106, It's Okay That You Can't Think. During the last couple of weeks, I've been talking with people about death. More than usual for me, I think. Or maybe it's more that I knew one of the people that died. I knew the next of kin in a couple of other situations. I connected quickly with the families and other situations. I'm fine, but I'm a little weary. And for me, this weariness is a reminder that grief is exhausting for very many reasons. A couple episodes ago, I talked about the dual process model of grief. Um, and um, that model talks about us going through these processes of grieving, doing this grief work. Um, and that process, those processes are exhausting. Take a listen to those episodes. I'll link to them below. The disruptions to sleep, to eating that happened during uh, the time after a death and for a long time after that, having to think about adjustments, crying itself is exhausting. And recently I've realized that even the habits of life that included that person and now have to be rethought. We had formed habits of how we lived and now everything is a decision rather than 40% of what we do in life being habits. And so it's no wonder that we are exhausted and it's no wonder that we find ourselves not being able to think. I talked about this thinking challenge in my book, This is Hard, and I wanted to read to you um, that section uh, as part of thinking about why it's okay that I can't think. Of course, it's hard to think. I don't know why I can't remember that. I hear it all the time. People forget how to write. People forget the names of places that they have seen a hundred times. And then people say, I'm sorry, I can't think of that name. I can't remember my address. Why can't I think of that name? They, or maybe you, feel like it must be your fault that you can't remember. I ask them to not apologize. They always say, I'm sorry, when I say that. They, or maybe you, just had a massive disruption of everything. You are wondering what's going to happen next. You're wondering what you could have done differently. You're thinking about what people will say, what people will expect from you. And at the same time, you have all these details. You are realizing that you will never have another conversation with that person. Of course, you can't think in the way that you wish you could. Your mind is preoccupied by questions. Your body has just had a shock. What can you do to help yourself? You can ask people to repeat questions. You can ask other people to answer questions on your behalf. You can ask for a few minutes to think or to rest, just calling a timeout. You can eat something, even if you don't feel like it. Nothing is wrong with your thinking. Everything is wrong with your heart. Sometimes the most helpful thing we can offer to people is rest and safety and relief from being expected to entertain and to host and to support us. I took a week off from this podcast, which consisted of me taking my own advice and remembering that I'm making up the deadlines here and I'm making up the, the timing. So giving myself permission to not follow through on my own expectation ended up being an incredibly helpful thing. So consider how to leave yourself space too. Even as we are talking to people who are grieving, we're absorbing their grief and we can have a hard time thinking of what to talk about too. And if you're grieving, I give you permission to not be able to think and to not have to apologize. Thanks for listening to Finding Words in Hard Times, the podcast. 
where we provide tools and stories to help you be more comfortable as you help others in hard times. Subscribe to the newsletter at thisishard.substack.com. Check the show notes for links and resources. Consider buying This Is Hard, What I Say When Loved Ones Die. And thanks so much for being a helper.